In this video, we're going to take a look at how we can create macros using the Action Recorder in AutoCAD. The Action Recorder is located here on the Manage tab in this first panel here. The Action Recorder is basically just going to record anything that you do so that you can play it back later as a separate command. I'm going to create a simple macro here where I'm basically going to draw a circle and then have it create an array of the circle. And I'm going to record all those steps and then we'll see how we can modify recordings as well. So to begin with, I am going to come up here and select my record button. Now we can see the action tree opens up and this is where it's going to record every step. It's important to try to avoid extra clicks and picks and escapes, things like that, that can add extra things into your macro. And what I'm going to do first is create a layer called circles. So I don't have to use the command line version. I can actually go to the home tab, go to the layer properties manager, select new, give it the name circles. I'm going to make this one red. And then I'll go ahead and set it as the current layer in here. And then I'll close the layer properties manager. Next, I'm going to draw a circle at zero, zero. So I'll start my circle command, zero comma zero and enter. And I'll just give it a radius of one here. So I'm gonna start my array command. I am going to go ahead and use the command line version of this, it'll work more smoothly. Uh, even though, as you saw, I was able to use the layer properties manager and open that dialog box, uh, I am gonna use the command line version of array. So I'm going to put in dash array and enter. It's going to tell me to select the objects and I am going to use the keyboard shortcut L. If you haven't used L before, it stands for last and it will create the last object drawn. That's important because I can select this particular circle, but that doesn't mean it will select properly in the macro itself. I want to draw the circle and then select that circle. So I'll type in L and enter for that one. And then I'll press enter to continue with the array command. It's going to ask me if I want rectangular or polar. I'll go ahead and choose a rectangular. And for this one, I want two rows. So two and enter and three columns. The distance between my rows is going to be four. And the distance between my columns is also going to be four. Then I'm going to use the zoom command and zoom extends. So I'm just going to type zoom or Z and enter and then E and enter for zoom extends. And that's all I want this to do. So I'm going to go stop. So I'll go to the manage tab and then press stop. Then it's going to ask me to name this macro. So I'll give it the name circle array. I can enter in a description if I want as well, but I'll go ahead and just click okay for this one. Then I'll test this out. So I'm going to create a new blank drawing based off of the ACAD template. As you can see, there is no circle layer in here, so it should create it for me. I'll go to the Manage tab, select Circle Array from the drop down list of macros here, then click Play. And you can see that it played the macro. It did leave my Layer Properties Manager up. So I'm going to go ahead and close that. But as you can see, it actually did the steps themselves. Next, we'll edit this recording here. So I can see my steps here in my action tree. And I can see that I had opened up the layer properties manager here with this layer command. But then you can see that when it actually did the steps, it basically used the command line version of it. So it created a new layer, and then it renamed it, and then it changed its color. So really this step right here was opening the dialog box, we can actually right click on that and delete it. And then the layer properties manager will no longer appear on screen. So as you can see, while we can use dialog boxes, it's often more efficient to go ahead and do things based on the command line. We can also add messages to commands. So I'm going to right click on the overall command circle array and choose insert user message. That'll open up this dialog box where we can insert a message that appears when the command is started. I'll simply enter that this macro creates a layer a circle, and then an array of the circle. And then I'll click OK. 
The next thing I want to do is give this command a little more flexibility. So as I did the array here, you can see that it asked me for the number of rows, the number of columns, the space between rows, and the space between columns. So what I would actually like this to do instead is prompt the user for how many they want in each case. So I'm going to right click on the two here for the number of rows and choose pause for user input. I'm going to repeat that for the next three as well. So that way when we run this command, we can put in how many rows, how many columns, and then the spacing between them. So let's test this out. I'll remove the push pin here so that will collapse and I'll do another new blank drawing based on the ACAD template. Then I will play my array. So here's my message. It lets me know what it's going to do. So I'll just simply click close. Now it's asking me for the number of rows, the number of columns, and the spacing between rows and the spacing between columns. Now you can see it created all the circles that I wanted and it did the zoom extents. Also notice that it no longer leaves the layer properties manager up. So a very efficient way to create some custom commands, just simply turn on the recorder, run the steps and stop it. And then if you have to do a little bit of modification, you can see that's not that big of a deal either. That concludes this look at creating a custom macro using the action recorder in AutoCAD.